and potentially the end of things at Gold Coast. So through the reporting of Caroline Wilson and now Tom Brown, we're all on high alert that Stuart Dew's time with the Suns is coming to an end. He's in his sixth season. The Suns are seven and nine. He has dealt with scrutiny constantly through 18 months. First, the spectre of Alastair Clarkson, which he was able to see off, and Banker 10 and 12 season, which was the equal to Gold Coast's best in the competition. But this year, the bar felt like finals. He had a two-year contract extension. There were no triggers within that, but he doesn't have the protection of maximum payouts. This is a club owned by the AFL, so it's a six-month clause only. At seven and nine, they're not quite the team that they aspire to be. They're about the same version that they were last year. And maybe there's a level of patience with that that has run out. I think Stuart Jew has walked a really difficult line. And in recent times, he's laid claim to that job strongly. His connection with the players, the commitments that the youngsters have made because he is the head coach and what they are building together but the machinations the politics behind the scenes feel like they've been running against him we're on high alert as to whether that is about to unfold right now but there's a certain pattern to these things which becomes inescapable nathan buckley's in the studio he, he's lived both parts of this relationship in various guises hello to you bucks yeah jared Just yeah it is like a romantic relationship the um you know listening to Angie's press conference on the way in here and um, you know the possibilities are endless. The the um, yeah the 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 landscape is clear and it's it's ready for something to be built. Um, you you really you get that space and time at the beginning of of any relationship to to build it the way you want to build it. At the end, and if if and the end does come to most relationships, you know whether they're professional, romantic, or otherwise, um, you um, they can be messy. Uh, but I, I, well, I don't know exactly where the situation is with Stuart Jew, but it's a, it's an interesting contrast because you know there's a start to things and how they should start, and you can assess that, and there's an end to things, and you can assess that as well. So let's make our assessments uh, on some of what we know. So you'd express the view at various stages during the season that you felt like Dew had to make finals with Gold Coast in his sixth year to be secure. Yeah, I think. It, it, you, you need forward momentum. You always need forward momentum as a team, as a club, that you get the honeymoon period at the beginning when you get to um, – where, where you get a little bit of leeway um, and it's okay if you go backwards for a, for a moment before you go forwards. Sometimes the progress is not abundantly evident in the win-loss and that is up to the people internally in the football club and, and, they're, and slightly removed from the coaching and that is – the chief, you know, the CEO, and in particular the football manager, the director of footy, and I think that in this particular instance, you know, Mark Evans and, and Wayne Campbell are two particularly reserved and respectful uh, operators, and I think that they would have canvassed enough of the people within the organisation. They would have worked really closely with Stuart to to get the best out of this situation. But yes, he, he the win loss definitely needed to be heading forward. But my opinion is external. Um, I think the only people with all of the evidence and and all of the the uh, landscape in front of them to make it a call like this on who your coach should be, who your conditioner should be, who you should be recruiting, are people inside the club. I'm interested in the how would Stuart do feel so. He lived a really difficult season last year and finally got the imprimatur. We do believe in you and we do want it to work. So he makes, he builds his strategy Mm. around that. And I think he's done a really good job answering the constant questions about it and, and really owning the job. If he's had the, the rug pulled from him last night, do, do you think he would feel bitterly let down that he um, hasn't been allowed to essentially finish the exam? He was given the two-year contract extension and it, you know, he may very well only last 16 games of that. Well, we don't know exactly where the extension was leading, what, what 
parameters were needed to be hit. So it was it was unequivocal the extension. It didn't contain any triggers of performance this year. No, I, I'm not talking from a trigger perspective. But when the conversations were had, it was right. This is this is where we agree we need to be. And I don't think anyone, bar Mark Evans, Wayne Campbell, and Stuart Jew, would would be privy or or even have the ability to determine the tenor of that conversation and the postulates of it going forward and what they wanted to see from the club. You know, not, not just on the field, but in, in, on the training track, around the gym, for the staff, you know, for the players, and then therefore for the outside of the football club. So, and, and what they expected to be and where they wanted to present themselves in the competition. So I don't know whether they've been met or otherwise. I don't know whether there's been a failure to respond to that conversation because I don't know what it was in, in the get-go. Outside, we see a two-year commitment, which we saw with Brett Ratton yep. not, not so long ago, and we're seeing it increasingly that clubs or individuals, more so the clubs, are, are, be, are feeling emboldened to say, this is not the direction that we feel we should be on. This is not the trajectory that we that we want to be taking, and we think that someone can do the job better. Now that has we have seen that happen before, and we'll see it happen again because if there's enough evidence internally, the the, the people in those positions would be negligent in their duties if they don't make these calls. So Tom Brown is confirming his report that Stuart Dew has been sacked, and a press conference will be held on the Gold Coast at eleven thirty. Do you think it's the right call? I do, I, once you've made the decision, if that in fact is the way, if that's the, the decision has been made, it's very hard to to hold that information clearly. So if Caroline has has some information and has, has run with that, I mean, if I was Stuart Jew last week, I wouldn't be dis- you know, he, he went at Caroline, but the reality is that when, when he sat down in his quiet moments, he would have been going, well, who internally here has allowed that information to get out? Because that's where, yeah, so that's not ideal. That's not the way a, a great club operates. And that that would be something for the, the Gold Coast hierarchy to, to, to reflect on to, and to answer going forward. Um, but that doesn't take away from what they may believe is the decision that they need to make as difficult as it may be. And it might not look fair from the outside, but you asked about the, how, how he's handled the questions. The questions only come when, when the progress doesn't look like it's there. I think he's handled it as well as he could, possibly could have. I don't know it, how he is fundamentally as a coach, his relationships with his players and his stuff. I don't know that I don't have enough insight into that. And unless you're there, I don't think you have all of the information and I think he's handled the last part, you know, the last month, six weeks, saying, I am the man for the job. I think he's handled that really well. I think he's projected strength. I think he said, I'm in for the long haul, which is exactly what he needed to do. But there just hasn't been enough upward swing or progress or momentum towards where the Gold Coast Suns want to be. And they clearly believe that, one, he isn't the man or the person, and two, that they can find better. Otherwise, they wouldn't make this call. So there's no sort of coincidence of choosing July. It is to clear the job so that you are free to go and explore what's there. And particularly, once Damien Hardwick was on, was wild on the terrain, as you like, the only way to approach somebody like that is to have a vacancy. You can't be, especially because... Dew and Hardwick are tight is you can't make those maneuvers while someone is still in the job. So the, the, the logic of opening the job up in July is to be free and transparent. We have a vacancy. We're going to speak to whoever we choose. Especially, I mean, and, and if, if we just look at that in isolation, and this is without apropos of not having anything, any information really, but Stuart Dew and Damien Hardwick are mates. So this and, and there is a connection there as individuals, as teammates. There's no way that there's no way that you could operate in a vacuum and, and believe that you could make that tr- transition without being transparent. So that's that's a sh- that's making wild assumptions around Damien Hardwick. But yes, you're right. I I, th- I think that once you've once the cl- the first part is the club decides that it needs that that 
that that per- the incumbent is not the person that we believe can take us where we need to go. That happened with Brett Ratton last year. We had a had a really clear example of that. Very similar circumstances with the two year deal, and then six months in being turned around. This is quite quite similar. Six months in of the, the, that two year deal, really, or nine months into that two year deal, and we turn it around. Then they will have an idea of the type of person that they believe, whether it's an experienced coach, whether it's a, new, a, a, a fresh coach, they'll, they'll have an idea of what their list needs. And the questions around the playing group, et cetera, they, we, we are a resilient mob in footy. I mean, very few players go through with one coach. So it's, it's not going to be detrimental to the club. It's not going to set them back as such, but it, there will be a, a period of transition and trauma that um, is, will, will begin this morning. So the goal coach coaching position, Guy McKenna, the first four years of foundation coach, just as they were about to potentially become successful, he got sawn off. And part of the rationale of that at the time was they didn't want Guy McKenna as that coach. They thought they were not only going into the eight, but they were destined for the top four. So after their best season, their fourth season, Guy McKenna got the sack. They went for Rodney Ede at that stage. That didn't last three seasons I think as soon as he arrived, it wasn't the job that he imagined, and that was uh, spectacularly unsuccessful. Then they went right back. They stripped it right back. So Stuart Dew's job was difficult from the start, uh, only slightly less difficult than McKenna's was. They went four wins, three wins, five wins, seven wins. And then last year, they appeared to have made that progress 10 and 12, but here they are at seven and nine. And that's the back halves of seasons, mm. which which you've articulated a few times as where they, they haven't been able to sustain and where they might have driven forward out of the bye, they've um, they, they've lost their way. And, 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 and there's still seven games left. I mean, there's an extra game in this season, but, you know, they're, they're three wins. Gold Coast are three wins away from – or four wins away from their best season ever in their in their history. And that's, that's actually not saying a great deal when you go back to the club being 13 or 14 years old and – or 12, this is the 13th season. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, so, I, so 2011 being the first, the first year with Guy McKenna. And, and in their fourth year, they actually they had a 10-win season. And as you said, the, the, the sights were set on. And, and, and that was progress, 3-3, three, 8-10. Three, so you're, you're on your way up. But you would be, you would, you'd be spitballing to work out whether that was the right decision to move Guy McKenna on way back when. So the club is accountable to the decisions that it makes. It's accountable to the people that it brings in, the people it lets go. It is a certain, it is a circumstance that is difficult in itself. You know, Gold Coast is a, is a new, is, is that one of the newer organisations. It's a, it's not a football heartland. There have been challenges with the stadium. There was with the stadium. There have been challenges with retention of players. Um, there was, a, there was challenges earlier around the, the party lifestyle of a the, the party um, culture of the yeah. of the Gold Coast versus you know the professional existence. Now you can manage that, but it has been seen as something that's been a challenge. The club is still finding itself, and it's and it's probably going to need someone really strong in their philosophies, experienced in what coaching demands and what AFL success looks like. And that may well, in fact, be what the the hierarchy have decided that they're looking for. It's, yeah, it's hard to sidestep that, isn't it? Is if you are moving Stuart Dew on, you are certainly looking at someone who has a mastery of coaching, not who's doing an apprenticeship in coaching. And and, and I suppose at some stage we'll we'll flip to Ange and, and his initial yeah. his initial um, utterings and and the. the Point being, and I think he's probably as good a coach as an example of a, of a great coach, successful coach in in many different places. And he talks he talks about you know the, the results are a product of the way that you carry yourself, the way you talk to each other, the way that you handle your preparation and training, the way you face the challenges um, or obstacles that are inevitably going to be in your path. And how you carry yourself as a person. So I, I think that that's someone who's travelled that journey, who's gone through a couple of cycles of that. Yeah, ideally, they've someone who's who's topped the mountain and actually had that um, 
experience to know that yes, if you do A, B, and C, and you follow this path philosophically, that people grow and develop and create a bond and can succeed together. Then yes, that's that's what you'd be looking for, and that's what coaches are. That's great coaches, great leaders, you know, um, great managers. You know, people that are good at what they do in any relationship standpoint, they have a philosophy, they have a way about how they choose to bring people together and that's what they'll be looking for on and off the field. So Tom Morris is confirming Tom Brown's reporting. So Tom Brown reported that the Gold Coast have sacked Stuart Jew. Tom Morris is the players have just been told and that Stephen King is going to take over as the interim coach from here. So Caroline's report was spot on. Yes, is the reporting a week ago with all of its detail around what was happening politically at the Gold Coast yeah. was right. And I feel for Stuart Jew that uh, he appeared oblivious to that before it was in the public domain and then was left by the club to fight the fight for a week before ultimately being sacked. I, d I don't think that. that's the way. Someone will know whether that's a fact or not. Whether or whether there was a... My... I'd like to think that there was a conversation with Stuart along the way and that, that there was an understanding that this could have been a possibility. Whether that conversation was had, I've got no idea. Because... Information can, can get out it can, anywhere and everywhere. Don't leave a man fighting for his job publicly that he's already lost. Or having, yeah, correct. Don't do that. No, correct. Don't, and, and, there, and, there's a level of dignity that has to be that you you owe a level of loyalty and dignity to the person you're you're seeing out the door, and I think they've failed on that front. Absolutely, and that is that is for the hierarchy at the Gold, at the Gold Coast to work out what they want to be as an organization, how they want to treat their people. Because if this, if that in fact is what has happened and Stuart Jew was not aware of the machinations that were quite clearly happening behind him, that now there's going to, and there's, and there's layers in that as well, because there needs to be the, the seed planted that, Hey, we need to look beyond the man. We might need to look at the, if this is the right guy. And then there needs to be a process that's followed. Okay. Well, we love we love the idea of reviews, don't we? Externally, we said we you need to review the position. Well, reviews happen daily. Reviews happen weekly. Reviews happen every time you step out onto a field. You get a progress report. Yeah. yeah every training session is a progress report. So you would you would anticipate that the powers that be, the people that are making this decision, would have gone through a process to work out exactly how they were going to handle this situation, whether they were going to double down and and, and allow Stuart to complete his contract or whether they feel like they needed to make a shift. Pre-seasons are probably as impactful as any. How a pre-season is run, how you how the feel is, before you even get to a chance to, to win or lose against your first opposition, you'll have an idea on whether that coach, whether that guy or the environment is, is actually progressed from where it was 12 months earlier. Yeah. So we it's, it's things that don't pop out the surface necessarily – that are actually that need to be measured and need to be um, assessed, and I've got no doubt that they did that. But when they when the final decision was made, when they said, "Okay, we need to move on this," and if Stuart wasn't the first to know, and it seems that that's the case, yes, well then the club has got to look at its processes. So Stuart Jew has been sacked as the Gold Coast coach. The Suns going to hold a press conference at eleven thirty today, which we will take you to. I was just thinking back on the the timing of. Uh, his contract extension and after it they went three and six so they didn't get the upswing that they were Tony Cochran and Mark Evans were desperate for Stuart Jew to work out and to be successful and to lead them through from the time where it was decided I reckon they went three and six and now they've gone seven and nine so the losing gets you in the end but they've you, gone you 10 it. and 15 from the moment where they put their faith in him they then went 10 and 15 and I think that's just led them to the point where no more. Well, he could he could be the best relationship builder. He could be a great motivator. He could he could know the game inside out and be a great tactician. But ultimately, you you said you know the questions how difficult it has been for him with the questions that are coming. And you need to you need to sit down and look really look in the mirror in in a position as a senior coach and I've been in this position and say 
well, are, have you got the nuts? Have you got the ability to actually go from where you are to where you need to be to give these people that you're with the best opportunity to succeed and to and to make the most of their very limited time in this very privileged position in AFL football. And right now, when the dust settles, Stuart and everyone else involved in it will say, I might have had all these attributes, these positive attributes, and I might have had all these things against me in different times, but for a, a long enough period I was given, we weren't able to win enough. And that's why the questions come. No coaches. I think it was Pete Ryan who gave us that no coach has survived six years without making finals and continued on in the job. So Stuart G, 36 wins, 84 losses and one draw in his time as the Suns coach. And that time has now set. The Lions 